we present Rosie and James. Based on the Railway series by the Reverend Wilbert Audrey and Thomas the Tank Engine and Friends by Britt Allcroft and David Mitten. Out of all the engines on Sodor, you would never find one so proud of his paintwork as James. He talks for ages about just how much he thinks his red coat makes him the best engine on the whole railway. This often goes largely ignored by the other engines. They are fond of him, but they tire of hearing how much smarter he looks compared to them. I just don't know what the back controller would do without me, boasted James in the yard one morning. Dependable, reliable and seldom late, but above all, easily the smartest engine on the line. I shouldn't be too surprised if he asked me to pull the express again one of these days, my red paint is so splendid. Gordon harumped. If you ask me, James, you have it all wrong. Blue is the only proper colour for a really useful engine, as Thomas once said. James snorted. He dreaded the very idea of him being painted blue ever since the fat controller had threatened to repaint him in that colour after he had spoiled his new top hat. Yes, right before Thomas got himself covered in coal. Face it, Gordon, I would never be seen in blue. Rosie was arranging some trucks she was due to take to Thomas's branch line in a nearby siding. Normally, Percy would be taking this train but Mavis had needed to go away for an overhaul, so while Toby had gone to the quarry in her place, he and Thomas had had to manage Toby's work on top of their own. To help take some of the workload off, the fat controller had arranged for one of the smaller mainline engines to help out every day when needed. Today, it was Rosie's turn, and she was needed to take Percy's evening goods from Tidmouth to Farquhar, while he took Toby's stone trucks to the harbour. Rosie stopped her work when she heard James talking. She looked admiringly at his red paint. I must admit, you do have a very good point, James, she replied. Red paint is a splendid colour for an engine. James beamed with joy. At long last, one of the other engines agreed with him about his paintwork. I should get myself repainted red. That way we can both look splendid. James spluttered. <laughs> what? He exclaimed. Don't be silly, little Rosie. There can only be one splendid red engine on this island, and that is me. But Rosie wasn't listening. Still thinking about being painted red, she collected her trucks and puffed away. Rosie's journey went smoothly. The lines were clear for her. She left every stop right on time and she even arrived at Fafarqua two minutes early. But on the way back, there was trouble. She pulled into Hackenbeck Light Engine, where she found Thomas, Annie and Clarabel looking miserable. Whatever's the matter, Thomas? she asked. My brakes have jammed on, sighed Thomas. I can't move another inch and I'm already running late. Can you take my passengers to the junction, please? They won't get home otherwise. Of course I will, smiled Rosie. I was going that way myself. I'll get them there quicker than you can say. Luckily no one was hurt. Luckily no one was hurt, Thomas said with a cheeky grin, and both engines laughed. Soon, Rosie was coupled up to Annie and Clarabel, and they puffed off. The two coaches twittered amongst themselves. They missed Thomas, but they were most impressed by Rosie. She's kind and so gentle. What a smooth journey. What a smooth journey. She's kind and so gentle. They pulled into the junction just as Gordon rumbled in with the express. Rosie told him what had happened. Gordon was impressed and promised to mention her work to the fat controller at Tidmouth as he roared away. As indeed, the fat controller came to see Rosie in the shed. Your work on the railway has been good, Rosie, he said. 
And today, you've gone above and beyond the duties of a really useful engine. Well done. As a reward, you shall have a new coat of paint at the works. Thank you, sir. Please, may I wear a different colour? The Fat Controller stared. Why would you ask that? Because I found I rather like the colour red, sir, and it would be so nice to have a change from pink all the time. The Fat Controller chuckled. Ho oh, oh, ho, I suppose it would. Since you deserve this repaint, I can't see why not. Rosie smiled from buffer beam to buffer beam. A few days later, James pulled into the yards when he heard the other engines talking. Such a beautiful shade of red, and this time I'm not even joking, he heard Charlie say to Samson and Bradford. Like a beautiful red flower, whispered Emily to Henry. James, of course, thought they were talking about him. He moved slowly into the yards, thinking they wanted to admire his paint, and stopped in a cloud of steam. Here's James! he announced. But instead of a positive reception of praise for his paintwork, he was met with stern looks. Silence in the ranks, barked Bradford. I don't know what you think you're barging in here and interrupting, Minnie, but if you think you're the centre of attention, you clearly have nothing in your smoke box. If you wish to know what we're talking about, turn your eyes front and centre. In the meantime, I suggest you shut up. Oh dear, how's that? Never mind. He added when he saw James's disappointed face. James's expression soon turned to fury when he noticed that a little tank engine had just recently emerged from the works. She had entered it in pink with red stripes, but when she left, she wore red all over with gold boiler bands, light grey lining, the number 37 in light grey under her cap, and the letters NWR on her tanks. James couldn't believe his eyes. A few days ago, he had told Rosie he could be the only red engine on the line, and yet there she was in red! His colour! Rosie! he snapped. What do you think you're playing at? Rosie looked nervously at James. She had a nasty feeling this wouldn't end well. I wanted to have a, a new coat, a different colour, she stammered. You wanted to steal my spotlight, didn't you? James snapped. I, I, you little copycat! How dare you wear my colours! That's enough, James, burst out Edward. Rosie earned her new colours fair and square. If you have nothing nice to say to her, I suggest you be on your way. James grunted and reversed into the sidings. When no one was looking, he found a coal truck in a siding, pushed it onto Rosie's line and bumped it hard. The truck went flying along the line and hit Rosie right on the buffers. Coal and coal dust flew all over her. Poor Rosie looked as though she wanted to be anywhere but in the yards at present, as tears rolled down her cheeks. Bradford and the other engines looked furiously about the yard, but James was nowhere to be seen. He had picked up the goods train he was due to take to Fafarqua, for it was his turn to help out on Thomas's branch line that day, and wisely disappeared. James rumbled down the line, still fuming. His driver and fireman weren't impressed. You wait until the fat controller hears about this, they scolded. But James didn't listen. How dare Rosie try and steal my place? How dare she? He fumed. He was so furious, he didn't notice how close he was to the level crossing. This was the same one where Thomas had had a run-in with a policeman many years ago. James rounded the bend when he saw a lorry moving slowly across the level crossing. It was full of blue paint cans. The Sodor Steamworks had run out of that colour, and so they had placed a large order for more blue paint. The lorry driver hadn't seen James, who was going much too fast to stop in time. He slammed on his brakes, but the truck surged into him. On, 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 they cried, laughing. Help! wailed James. His crew jumped clear while he shut his eyes. There was a groaning crash! James felt something wet fall onto him. With feelings of dread, James slowly opened his eyes. 
he had come off the rails and had turned the lorry on its side. Both he and the lorry were dented, the lorry badly, with a smashed windscreen. Worst of all, blue paint was splattered from his smoke box to his cap and all over his crew, who were telling the lorry driver just what he could do with it. Blue paint, the colour he least wanted painted on him. James's worst nightmare had finally come true, and he let out a scream of terror. The guard had run up to the telephone box near the line and called for the breakdown collect The guard had run up to the telephone box near the line and called for the breakdown gang and the transport police. They arrived as soon as they could, and the police arrested the man for dangerous driving. The fat controller arrived aboard Rosie with the breakdown crane. He had a few choice words for James. The accident wasn't your fault, James. The driver broke the law and didn't use the phone box, despite the warning signs and the fact that the phone number and instructions were in the box. But I heard about what you did to Rosie just now, and I am most displeased with you. Rosie has every right to be the same colour as you, and you should never make her feel unhappy just because she wants to be red. We are all entitled to like the same things as others, and we should always share what we treasure with others. I shall send you to the works where you will be repainted into your old collar, and then you shall stay in your shed until I can trust you again. Yes, sir, James mumbled sadly. Rosie took the trucks away and then came back for James. She said nothing as she shunted him to the works. But when they arrived there, they found Thomas, who had just had his brakes mended, and was about to head off home. Hello, Rosie, he greeted. My, you look even more beautiful than Edward said you did. Why, thank you, Thomas, she replied. I just fell in love with the colour red, and, to be honest, I just wanted a change of colour. Well, I guess we all do sometimes, don't we? Thomas said. Especially some. Some go from green to blue, he added, thinking of himself. While some go from black to red to blue, don't they, James? I expect you know more about good changes than any other engine, don't you? The two tank engines laughed a lot. James was embarrassed and wished they wouldn't. But deep down, he knew that he had been a very silly engine. Rosie and James was written and read by TARDIS 9. The music was composed by Mike O'Donnell, Junior Campbell, Scarla Irenaeus, Mavis M, Thomas Audio HD and Sadrian Afro. The sounds were by Blue Tender Engine and Craig Eager. The editor was TARDIS 9. Thomas and Friends is owned by Mattel Incorporated. This is a non-profit fan production.